We'll read two passages uh, this morning. The first one is from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. The Old Testament prophet Isaiah will read verses, um, chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. And then we'll also read from the New Testament Gospel of John. Old Testament prophet Isaiah, chapter 11, if you're using... This is a uh, Old Testament prophecy that speaks about the person of uh, Jesus Christ. Um, he himself claims that this prophecy is fulfilled by him in Luke chapter 4. And uh, we're going to focus specifically on verse 10 of this section, but we'll read verses 1 through 10. This is the Word of God. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will lie, live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together, and the little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together. And the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den. And the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. And they will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as waters cover the sea. In that day... The root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. In John chapter 14, we'll read uh, verses 15 through 24. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, but Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. As far as reading, we'll re sing uh, from Psalm 132. Psalm 132. In this psalm, the people of Israel are singing about the tabernacle of God, which represented in the Old Testament the presence of God. And they're longing for that tabernacle to finally find a settling place. And so they're singing about that. And we'll sing recognizing that we long for uh, God to have his presence among us. What does that psalm have anything to do with uh, the text that we're looking at? Well, you'll notice in uh, one of the stanzas we sang, O Lord, go to your place of rest. 
Um, and in our text of this morning, it talks about this baby that will be born, this child at the root of the br- branch of Jesse, uh, that will have a glorious resting place. And in uh, those words, we can find incredible joy and comfort as we think about home. And I want to begin by asking you a question. Have you found home? Have you found home? I grew up um, as an immigrant family. I think we moved um, in the first 12 years of my life, uh, probably close to 12 different times. I attended more schools than grades, uh, from grades 1 through 7, um, just constantly moving about from South Africa to the U.S. to Holland, back and forth and back and forth. And uh, a very, in some sense, um, chaotic uh, childhood. Um, And then we ended up in Colorado, and we stayed there for 15 years, I think. That's how long I lived there. And then from there to Virginia to Pennsylvania, and now in Canada. Is this home? I don't know. But I wonder for you, have you found home? Are you still searching? Do you even know what home looks like? Like, what's home look like in your mind as you think about, this is where I feel at home? Is it a certain type of building? Is it a certain type of furniture inside? Is it a certain type of people around you? We just came out of the uh, holiday season, and uh, there's that Christmas carol. Some of you may know it. There's no place like home for the holidays. Is home, holiday, Christmas joy, and are you struggling right now because we haven't had any sun? And you wonder, well, where's the joy in life? Where can I feel at rest? I want to suggest that connected to that question is even a more important question for you and me. And if we can answer this second question, then the first question becomes quite easy. And the second question is this, where is God at home? Where is God at home? Because you and I were created in the image of God. You and I were created to be in the presence of God. You and I were created to be at home with God. Adam and Eve, um, they were given the, the Garden of Eden. And in that garden, God walked with them. That was their home. It was from that place where they were told by God, fill the earth and subdue it. From that uh, Garden of Eden, likely in uh, ancient Near East, from that place, that home, fill the earth, subdue it. That second question, where is God at home It's important for you and I to be able to answer before or if we want to be able to answer fully and finally that question of where am I at home? Why? Because you will be at home when God is at home and you know where God is. The theme, the idea of home comes from chapter 11, verse 10. We're in that verse. It says, In the day the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples, the nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. Now, that idea of resting place, I want to connect that to this idea of home for you as we think about um, this question. And so we're going to look a little bit in the Old Testament, just a, uh, two, um, three significant passages in the Old Testament. Because resting place, sometimes when we think of resting place in um, the English language, people think of your burial. Like, what's your final resting place? But that's not what resting place refers to in Scripture. Resting place actually refers to the place where you settle down, where you are at home. And so as I mentioned, Adam and Eve uh, were at home in Eden. Why? Because that's where God had created them uh, to be at home, to build out of, to build from. But Adam and Eve, they lost home with God because Satan tempted them into thinking they could find or have a better home than what God provided. 
God said, here's my home, here's my will for your life as you live in my home. And Satan said, did God really say that? God really say you can't eat that? And so they heard, believed Satan's words, and they lost home. God banished them from the garden. He said, All right, out, you're out of the home. He said, guards at the gates to the Garden of Eden. And so from that point on, humanity's story is trying to go back home. And God begins to reveal what that's going to be through Abraham. He calls him out of Ur where Abram feels quite happy, quite content. He feels like he's got a home. God says, no, that's not your eternal home. Come, I will show you a land where you will dwell and your people will dwell. So for the rest of Abram's life, he became a wanderer, wandering, searching. Where was home? Was it going to be in the land of Canaan? Well, no, Jacob and his descendants ended up in Israel in slavery. But God set them free. And as God set them free, he led them to the Mount Sinai. That's where he gave the Ten Commandments. And then he said, I'm going to bring you into a home. But he begins to show the people where home will be. There's a powerful verse, Numbers 10. I don't know if you uh, want to look that up. Go ahead and turn there briefly. Numbers 10. I think this is important for helping us to link our home with God's home. Uh, Numbers 10, verse 33, page 115 of uh, your pew Bibles. So this is in the story right after Israel has left Egypt. They've been saved by God from Egypt. They've gone through the Red Sea. They've wandered to Mount Sinai. In Mount Sinai, um, God's given his law. There's this been incredible theophany of the appearance of God with the people. And then they're ready to leave Mount Sinai and head towards uh, the land of Israel. And now uh, look in Numbers 10, verse 33. They set out from the mountain of the Lord and traveled for three days. And I'll hear, read carefully. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord went before them during those three days to find them a place to rest. In other words, you have all of the people and they're walk, walking through the desert and who goes before? Who's going to secure for them a home? Who's going to secure for them a place where they can rest? God the ark of God. You see in some of the other psalm, one of the psalms we sang, 134, um, O Lord, come to your place of rest. Why? Because even though we might be in a land, if you're not here, Lord, we won't be at home. We won't feel at home. Psalm 84, the first psalm that we sang, a sparrow finds a home to rest and you know where I find a home in your house, O God. And so in the Old Testament, there is this very tight linkage uh, between where God is at home, the people will feel at home. But where the people rebel, God removes his presence from them. So ask yourself, when do you feel at home? What does that look like? Some think home is anywhere but God. This is part of the lesson of the parable of the prodigal son. Father has two sons, a younger son. He's living at home with his father. Um, He has everything he needs, and he says, no, I want my inheritance. I'm going to go find a better home. And so some think a home is anywhere but God, and the parable ends up showing that there is no better home than with God because what happens to uh, to this younger son He ends up squandering uh, all of his uh, money. He ends up uh, finding work with pigs and eats the pig food. And the reality is, if you don't seek your home with God, there is no future. There is no rest.
Do you know where home is? There's a tradition in uh, Amish communities called rumspringa, which means jumping or hopping around. And it's this a rite of passage that they allow their young people to go through uh, where they come to a period in their, in their life, about 18, 19, and they're allowed to have one year where they go literally jumping around wherever they want to go to see where they finally want to settle down. Now, you may not have such a tradition in your culture, but is that the way you live your life? jumping around from one thing to another thing, trying to find home. You may have grown up in, in a Christian family connected to a church. You don't even have to be jumping around physically. You might be sitting there every Sunday and in your mind traveling off to far off places because you just don't want to be at home here. One author wrote, he said, you can still be living in your childhood bedroom and have departed for a distant country. You can pl still play the role of a good son with a heart that roams in the twilight beyond good and evil. Some think home is anywhere but God. Now there's others that think home is just the road. I don't know if you've ever heard the expression, it's not the destination but the journey. In other words, as long as I'm always doing something, going somewhere, heading something, I don't have to rest because it's not about resting. It's not finding a resting place. My life and human life is all about doing, moving, advancing, progressing. And so others make home the road. Same author says, do we tell ourselves we're just going in order to guard against the disappointment of never arriving. In other words, constantly searching, going from country to country, from community to community, from church to church, because every time you end up somewhere, it just doesn't satisfy. And so you call the home the road, always searching, never resting, because you don't want to face the disappointment of never arriving. Here's the good news. The gospel of God tells you and me that we weren't created for a restless existence that endlessly wanders. No, the good news of Jesus Christ is that we were created to rest, to have a home, to belong and to belong there, not just for a brief moment in time, but to belong there uh, for life, for eternal life. So where do I feel at home? Well, if we link it to, back to that second question, where does God feel at home? And that brings us to looking specifically at Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10. Because in this passage, it's talking about this person. This person that Isaiah is speaking about, um, as I mentioned, very clearly points to the person of Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ, he is the shoot. He's the growth that comes from the stump of Jesse. So Israel itself um, had, uh, been, had come to nothing, but out of Jesse... There's a new king that will come. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in the fear of the Lord. So there's this new king that's going to come. There's this new person. This person is the person of Jesus Christ who um, was born in Bethlehem, lived in ancient Palestine. And it says there in verse 10, in that day... The root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. That word banner is uh, similar to kind of a flag that's raised up. 
It's a signal. You can imagine if you want millions of people on this scavenger hunt trying to find home. Some of them are, are, are traveling to a new country. Some of them are heading to the hockey arena. Some of them are in the golf course. Some of them find it in the office. Others, they're in the cosmetic aisle day after day. They're, they're places that they're searching out where they feel like, oh, this is, this is what I need right now. People scavenging for home. And in the middle of this scavenger hunt of humanity, there's this flag that gets raised. A signal, not just for the people of Israel, but for the nations. For people across the world. And the nations, it says, will rally to him. Well, you can ask, okay, there's this flag that's raised, there's a signal that's raised. What is this referring to? What's Isaiah talking about? Well, the Bible answers it for us. Jesus himself actually says it in John chapter 12, verse 32, where he says, When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. In other words, Jesus Christ is talking about his cross. He says there's going to come a time uh, where I will be lifted up, I will be placed upon a cross. And then that cross and the proclamation, the preaching of that cross is going to be this signal, this banner that brings people from all tribes, nations, languages, and tongues uh, to find home peace with God. How does that happen? Because the good news of the cross is this, that Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for your sins so that you don't have to be afraid of going back home to God. You don't have to think that you've lost that chance of being at home with God. No, like the son who squandered everything, lived life in such rebellion and resistance to God and even used and abused everything that God said, that took the law of God and said, forget that, I'm going to do what I want. Jesus Christ died on the cross to take the consequence of your sin on himself so that you, like that young son, you can walk back home and you don't have to be afraid that dad's going to be standing there that God's going to be standing there saying I don't, I don't want you, you got to go fix that mess first now what does the father do in that parable? he runs out with open arms and he welcomes him home he says son you have a home here if only you would see that you don't have to be searching all over the place. Your home is here. It's with me. And from this home, you can live. And you can build and you can grow and you can flourish. That's that banner. That's that signal that's raised. And it's something that's proclaimed to all of us. To you and to me and to the entire world. The proclamation, the preaching of the gospel is this incredible flag that just run up the flagpole. That says to everybody that's searching. You might be in the pub. You might be in the brothel. You might be in the casino. You, you're looking. Stop looking. Come home to be with God. And his resting place in verse 10 will be glorious. This is referring to the resting place of Jesus Christ. Now some theologians, they look at this and they say, well, maybe this is, talks about his burial, his tomb, where he kind of rested. I don't think it does. I think it's far more powerful than that. In our reading of John 14, verse uh, 20, 
Uh, verse 15 through 25, John 14, verse 23 says this, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. In other words, what's this resting place that Isaiah 11 is talking about here? That resting place is believers. The church of Jesus Christ. His glorious resting place is the followers of Jesus Christ being gathered into the church of Jesus Christ. God makes his home with us in the person of Jesus Christ. And the church is the visible manifestation of the home of God. Not because we are perfect, but because the head of the home, Jesus Christ, the head of the body, he is the righteous one. It says it will be glorious. And if you consider with the eyes of faith the one holy Catholic church, the one holy universal church, it is a glorious manifestation of the presence of Jesus today. I mentioned how I had traveled from place to place, but there was one consistent theme throughout that travel. I was blessed to grow up and have a very godly Christian uh, parents. And there was one place of continuity through that constant change every Sunday. We were at a home in the Church of Jesus Christ hearing the preaching of Jesus Christ, considering our brother, our eldest brother Jesus, who died for our sins. So that as we go, went through this world, recognizing that there is a future, there's an eternal home that we are longing for. We are sojourners and aliens, but as we are wandering through this world, by faith, there is a place that you can be at rest. Why? Because Jesus Christ says, this is where I'm at rest. I just pause and, and think about that, what that means. That as you're constantly looking, as you're constantly searching, and Jesus says to you, guess what? Right here, this is where I'm at home with these people. This is where I'm at home. This is where I can live. This is where I can rest. This is where I can build and work and grow and this is, is the place, the solid foundation from which I can build and I can grow and I can go into this uh, world that's uh, filled with evil and, and, and wickedness and I can be at home here and from this place the kingdom of God will grow. I don't know what your life looks like right now. If it's uh, actually physically home, if you're on realtor.ca realtor or if you're at Home Depot and you're constantly trying to think about what kind of home I am. I don't know if you're moving from rental to rental. I don't even know. Maybe some of you don't even have a home, a physical home. But Jesus Christ and the cross of Jesus Christ says, come be at home with God. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. Do you know this? Do you believe this? Have you found home? There are some areas of your life that if they're present are immediate red flags that you're still searching. If you feel at home in a bar, if you feel at home doing drugs or at a brothel, or if you feel at home behind your computer watching pornography, if you feel at home outside the will of God, outside the law of God, 
if committing sin makes you feel like, oh, this is what I want to do, this is where I belong, then you're far from Jesus Christ. And God calls you to repentance, and he says, come back. Return. Recognize that where you are, it's never going to satisfy. So there are some immediate red flags where if you look at uh, the law of God and you see that just attractive and putting your heart at ease, and God calls you to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ, recognize that that is not the way of life. Seek forgiveness in the cross of Christ and be at home with God. There's these immediate red flags, but there's also just cautionary flags. Because there are things in our life that aren't outright sin, but become a passion or a goal of our life in finding peace. So if you find yourself more on realtor.ca or at Home Depot or thinking about your home and what kind of home you're going to buy next, more than you think about the person of Jesus Christ and who he is and what he's done, Search your heart. Do I know where home truly is? Even some good gifts of God, things that we pursue in life that biblically you recognize God says this is a good pursuit. Marriage, children, godly work, fruitfulness in our work, friendships, godly friendships, even these things that we are pursuing if not done in service to Jesus Christ, but rather done searching for a home, then God calls us to see that we need to be at home where Jesus is. Can you say, can you sing, I'm at home under the cross of Christ. I'm at home where my Father washes me with the blood of Christ. I'm at home with the people of Christ. I'm at home with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't know, my earthly life, it's all over the place, but I'm at home in the house of God. And it's not this building. It's the living stones. It's the people that are being built into that spiritual temple. Can you say that? Can you sing it? When you can and if you can and when you can. And as you do, it brings a great joy to wake up and to say, hey, I'm going to be reminded today that I have an eternal home. And I'm going to enjoy that today. As I come and took Jesus Christ, as I come with the people of God, as I come and I eat and I drink and I enjoy, I'm going to do that. Not because I'm searching for community. No, I'm doing it because that's home. Because that's where God is at home. And he's at work and he's shaping us. And that resting place of Jesus Christ is glorious. May you be at home in the house of God. Amen.